on 26th of February 2017. This man, one of the most wanted people on earth, was taken out by a drone strike orchestrated by the US Air Force in Syria. This news was covered by news channels all around the world, and the main reason was not just the man, but the unique top-secret missile that was used to get the job done. The AGM-114R9X Hellfire missile. This missile is fast, carries no explosives, and makes almost no damage to anything other than the target. In this video, with the help of 3D animation, we'll take a look at how the Hellfire missile and its variants work in detail. So without further ado, let's begin. This is the AGM-114 Hellfire missile. Hellfire stands for Heliborn, Laser, Fire, and Forget. It weighs around 108 pounds, it's 64 inches in length, 7 inches in diameter, and has a wingspan of 13 inches. It can travel at supersonic speeds of up to Mach 1.3, has a range of 6.8 miles, and can be launched from an altitude of more than 5,000 feet. It carries different types of warhead, depending upon the variant. There are 10 variants of this missile, designed for various purposes, but the main purpose was to destroy armored vehicles like the military tanks. In order to understand how the top-secret R9X variant of the Hellfire missile works, we'll have to understand the basic version first. So let's look at the anti-tank version of it. This missile has five main sections. Seeker section in the front, followed by autopilot and warhead section, guidance section, propulsion section, and the control section. The seeker section consists of a semi-active laser homing for high-accuracy laser spot acquisition and tracking. In simple words, it can detect a laser spot on the target and guide the missile towards it. Aircrafts like the Apache helicopter, AH-1W Super Cobra, MQ-1 Predator, and the MQ-9 Reaper unmanned aerial systems can carry Hellfire missiles along with a laser designator. The designator emits invisible coded laser pulses, known as pulse repetition frequency, and is fired at the target. When the laser hits the target, it bounces off into the sky, where they are detected by the seeker in the Hellfire missile. Now the missile makes necessary course correction to move towards the target and hits it on the topmost section, because that's the least protected part of the tank. Military personnel on ground can carry a handheld laser designator to point out the target for the laser-guided missiles. The AGM-114 Longbow version does not carry a laser seeker. Instead it carries a millimeter wave active radar homing system, which does not require external guidance to reach the target. Behind the seeker section, there's the electronic autopilot. The autopilot collects the data from the seeker and the guidance section, and based on that data, it will correct the position of the control fins to move the missile towards the target. Just below the autopilot, there's a 3.5-pound precursor warhead. When the missile gets closer to the target, the proximity fuse detonates the precursor warhead. This warhead is used to destroy the explosive reactive armor used on military tanks. The reactive armor fights fire with fire. When a projectile hits the armor, the armor explodes and stops the missile from damaging the body of the tank. The precursor warhead is made of a copper cone which is surrounded by an explosive. When the proximity fuse sets off the explosive, it explodes and turns the copper cone into high-speed jet of molten copper. This molten copper jet shoots out and hits the reactive armor. The armor explodes and stops the precursor charge, but right behind the precursor warhead, there's a 12.4-pound main warhead with a bigger copper cone. This warhead is set off immediately after the precursor warhead. The molten copper jet from the main warhead destroys the vital internal components as well as the occupants inside the tank. The tank is crippled or completely destroyed by hitting it in the exact same spot as that of the precursor warhead. Behind the main warhead, there's a pneumatic accumulator. Nitrogen or helium gases are stored in this accumulator, 
and are pressurized to 8,800 PSI, and they can last up to 70 seconds in normal conditions and 55 seconds in cold climate. These gases are used to move the fins with the help of electro-pneumatic actuators. Inside the guidance section, you'll see three gyros. A roll gyro, a pitch gyro, and a yaw gyro. These gyros are used to sense the attitude of the missile in flight. They have a rotating mass inside which acts as a gyroscope. The autopilot measures the position of the gyros, and based on that, it corrects the position of the fins accordingly, to keep the missile stable throughout the flight. The Hellfire missile uses Thiokol TX657 solid rocket motor for propulsion. It is made of butane trial trinitrate, and it burns for only 3 seconds, after which the missile glides towards the target like a glide bomb. It produces less smoke, which makes it difficult for the enemies to detect its position, and gives them less time to use countermeasures against it. The last section is the control section. The Hellfire missile has four inline wide cord short span fixed wings, with control fins at the trailing edge. It has four clipped delta stabilizing fins in a cruciform configuration, which is used to steer the missile in flight. The fins are moved with the help of electro-pneumatic actuators, which uses nitrogen or helium gases stored in the pneumatic accumulator. This is how a typical anti-tank version of the Hellfire missile works. Now let's take a look at the top secret version of the Hellfire missile, the R9X missile. It made its first appearance on 26th of February 2017, when this man was taken out in a drone strike when he was traveling in a car. The missile gained popularity in 2022, when another high-profile target was taken out in a drone strike in Kabul, Afghanistan. An interesting video was uploaded on the internet after one of the drone strikes, where we can see the remaining parts of the R9X missile after the explosion. Here we can see the lot number, where MGP is the manufacturer's code, which is Martin Marietta, now known as Lockheed Martin. 17K is the month and the year of manufacturing. 835 is the interfix number which refers to the production method or style. The missile version AGM-114R9X is clearly visible on the part. Let's see how it works. This is the AGM-114R9X missile, also known as the Ninja missile, aka the Flying Ginsu. It carries no explosives, instead it carries six long blades to slice down the target. Let's compare it with the anti-tank version. The seeker, guidance, and the control section are all the same, but the main difference is in the warhead section. The R9X carries only the autopilot without the precursor warhead, and six blades instead of the main warhead. These blades are deployed when the missile gets closer to the target. The blades are so strong that they can cut through metal and concrete. It consists of a main body, to which the blade holders are attached, and both of them are held together with a circular metallic bracket. Six razor-sharp blades are attached to the blade holder, and are held together with the help of hinges. What we don't know, however, is how they are deployed. They are deployed in one of the following ways, aerodynamically, electro-pneumatically, with the help of high-pressure gas from the pneumatic accumulator, with the help of explosive bolts like the ones used in rocket stage separation. What we do know is that each blade has holes in them to reduce weight. They are razor sharp and strong enough to effortlessly cut through the roofs of cars. The missile is so accurate that one specific passenger in the car can be targeted, while the rest of the passengers walk away with almost no injuries. When the R9X missile is launched, the proximity fuse will deploy the blades as the missile gets closer to the target. With high kinetic energy, the missile strikes the target, slicing and chopping down everything in its way. This missile was mainly designed to prevent injuries to the bystanders, or someone who's not the target. One of the target was in his balcony when he was taken out, while most of the other targets were in their cars when they were struck with this deadly high-precision missile. The Hellfire missiles are launched from M299 or M310 launchers. They are installed on Apache helicopters, MQ-9 Reaper, and the MQ-1 Predator UAVs, and they can launch the missiles in any order. The other versions of the Hellfire are unique in their own way. 
The 114 Longbow version can be launched from ships and aircrafts against armored vehicles, whereas the Romeo version can be used on all types of targets such as armored vehicles, fortified positions, soft and open targets. The K version carries high explosive warhead which is mainly used on armored tanks only. The Hellfires can also be launched from armored vehicles, as well as from the ground. Even though the US government never officially acknowledged the presence of the R9X version of missiles, the entire world knows that a missile like this exists, and it has been used multiple times in the past few years, and most probably will be used in the future as well. And that is how the versatile and deadly high-precision Hellfire missiles work. Thank you for watching.